Greetings, sapient beings. Greetings, you two. Rineko here. So, I have passed the exams, maybe. I think. I hope. I guess. Well, I did pass Japanese at least. So that's something. <laughs> and probably games engineering, but it will work out too. Anyway, so yeah. Semester took quite a while. I've, I've spent quite some time into it, like more than I would have imagined. And yeah. I was like, okay, I, I don't, I, I really want to focus on the exams, which is what I did last week. And so there were no streams, there were no big updates or anything. I didn't really have time to work on anything. So the plan is that I'm actually going to do something, something that's really cool, and maybe it's a little bit inspired by some big YouTubers. I don't know. So I don't think first semester is over, and idea I had. To do a semester review. <laughs> okay, but I'm gonna do it different. I'm not gonna be like, hey, here, I'm gonna sit here and talk about it all the day. No, I'm gonna do something else. So I'm gonna switch right to a special program that I like to use. There we go. Uh, Fire Alpaca. It's the wrong software. Maybe not the best, maybe not the worst. It's Python based, if I remember correctly. Maybe. I think it's a Python based. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds already really great. So what I'm gonna do is, um, before we get into the actual review, I need to clarify a few things. So first of all, um, yeah, where do I study, right? <laughs> like that's one of the big things. Of course, it makes a big difference. So I'm studying at the um, technical university. Technical university. Munich. It's in Germany, by the way. <laughs> in, in case you didn't know, I, I have no idea. Maybe there's some person uh, out there who doesn't know. But well, that's too long. So that's, they like to shorten it to T U M. Technical University Munich. Munich. So, what I'm understanding, if you don't know yet, shame on you. <laughs> I'm not just kidding. It's games and. Which is basically the technical thing, the technical side of game design. Okay, so let's get into some more detail on this. So the next big thing is like um, what I need to clarify before I can do the review. Because um, I don't really know how other uh, countries do it or other universities do it. But basically um, it's a bachelor. So what was it? BSc? That it, bachelor? Or BS? I think it's BS. That was biased. Yes. Bachelor. Oh yeah, I know why. Because it's like like B of uh, science, right? A BSc. That's what it is. Bachelor of Science. Not applied science. There's a difference apparently. I didn't know that. So yeah, Bachelor of Science. And so for the Bachelor of Science, or generally, you need 180 points. And these points are called EDS, which I think doesn't really matter that much. But so you need these 180 points. And so the way you get them is uh, by doing courses. And there are two different types of courses. So there's the um, obligatory, I think. And then there are these uh, chosen, basically. I think I'm going to call the live that. You can't see the obligatory. That's no problem. You can just move it like that. Ah, oh, magic. <laughs> so we have the obligatory and the chosen. By the way, the reason I do it like this with a painting software is because I think it's a good idea to like talks about something and also have something visual, I guess. So that's just my style, I guess, to talk about things. So. With that clarified, um, let's go on to the next step. So we have this uh, study, study that's um, short informatics, and then um, it's not just informatics. There's a field. This field is the games engineering. Uh, I'm gonna do GE because it's shorter. So okay, so. This is built up into four categories. So we can do like, well, not good with lines yet. Practicing still. 
Um, so we have like, I'm going to call it IT, Informatics. It's one of the study uh, courses or categories. The other one is um, Games Engineering. Then we have Math, which is inherited by Informatics. And then lastly, whatever you choose. Okay. So in IT, the uh, two courses that are actually obligatory it is um, uh, Informatics, Info. One, it's called Introduction to Informatics, basically. Also, uh, it's called Introduction to Informatics 1. <laughs> because there's a 2 as well, obviously. And one one is PGB, P, which is German for um, internship. Up oh, here we go. Is uh, PGDP, which is a uh, short for um, internship uh, base of programming. I guess you can remove the O. Very important. Oh, Praktikum der Grundlagenprogrammierung. Okay. All right. So in games engineering, it's uh, <laughs> rel relatively ridiculous. It's like the same as in IT, like uh, introduction to called ID. No, ID is info actually. All these shortcuts. It's so complicated, isn't it? This is if inefficient to do that way it's more effective, more effective to like this remove that eh. never mind I love the best I'm sorry sorry uh mark all okay so um hold i the e i d i which is introduction, E, Einführung, introduction, um, I, in, introduction, in, to, basically, uh, then there's a D. God. When's the message? I don't even remember the shortcuts. Oh yeah, it's it's the article. So, the, so introduction, <laughs> into, the, and information in, in informatics. So IITI would be here. That's what it would be in English, probably. Ridiculous, isn't it? And the other one is um, technically also ID. Like technically, from the title is exactly the same. Just it's games engineering. That's so um, uh, introduction into the informatics. Or games engine, basically. That's the only one there. Then we have like math, which is, uh, I don't know if you people know it, shortened uh, with DS, the Strukturen in English, discrete structures. So. Math. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then you uh, choose chose, chosen. Can choose like whatever, but the two categories were like uh, related and unrelated. The related ones are like um, anything that has to do with your study or field. So anything that has to do with informatics, come on, come on, move up. Anything that has to do with informatics or anything that has to do with games engineering, that's the related ones. And unrelated ones are like. Obviously, once the day net have to deal with those. All right, that pretty much clarifies everything there is, which makes it a lot easier to explain stuff. So, also about the 180 points, 180 points. Oh. Yes. Um, these are split up into a certain amount. Let's call it A, B, C. And D? No, no D. There's no D. No one needs a D. 
ABC is enough. Just like the song from, from Michael Jackson. <laughs> or Jackson 5 to be more exact. That's the same person, right? I don't remember. Category 8 is um, obligatory. Category B is um, the, uh, the related one. The chosen ones. Uh, these are the chosen ones. The related and unrelated. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I know that the unrelated are eight points that you can get. Oh, obligatory are like I don't know. I think it was like thirty and and one hundred twenty-two or something like that. Correct. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But basically, you can't just do one uh, category. That's what I want to get to. Basically, one. All right. So that basically clarifies ev uh, the basics and everything you need to know. Hey there, I got an email. Okay. Anyways. So now with that clarified, we can actually go into the review. Because that's like important to know like all the details about it. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, review them respective to how I just mentioned them. The one will be informatics basically. Then we have EDDP. Use my mistake there. Go. And I'm gonna go into games engineering. Then into math. Okay. Alright. So let's start. Um Ivy. So basically what we've been doing in there is um we got uh, basic principles of informatics explained. So uh, with the use of a Google search engine, so well, basically we got a good and uh, good look into how does the, how how do search engines work? How do like how do you, the the principle behind page rank and all that kind of stuff? Like all the technical details in there. At the same time, while doing this, we got an explanation of different ways, like how do pointers work, how does uh, call by reference, how does uh, call by value work in Java, for example, or generally, actually. Um, we also got a look into stacks and heap, a short explanation, more or less, on how machine code, like um, assembly, works. And we also got a look into some structures and algorithms like search algorithms which are like very prominent i guess on college and degrees and everything and the other thing is like the structures like how would you implement a stack with the basic stuff you have in a programming language how would you implement a circular buffer how do you implement a queue how do you implement a list an array list and all that kind of stuff basically Nothing really too big, and also generally what is there in the programming language, like generics or templates, depending on which language uh, you use. Um, the Technical University Munich uses um, Java to introduce people to programming, which is fine, I guess. I'm more, I'm not really a fan of Java, but it's a good language to start off, I guess. Except that there are some mistakes that you take from it, like if you have a garbage collector, it's it's like learning driving. If you learn driving with a uh, manual, then you have all the control, you know all. And if you switch from manual to automatic, you have no problems. Or well, not many, at least. If you switch from manual, uh, if you switch from automatic to manual, then you have some problems because you have like, you need to control it. You may not know how and may often f even forget it. I don't know. That's the thing. So that's really something, um, and it's basically the same with programming. If you program in Java, you never really work with pointers, you never really work with a, a call by reference controlled by you, you never work with, um, what did I tell you, say before? Come on, pointers. Oh, I already mentioned those, I think. Uh, garbage collection, that's a big thing. 
like you never le learn to clean up your own stuff and that's like ah! if you would learn uh, with c++ you would like learn these things and know how to do them but it is more complicated to get into so i can understand it from that point and yeah so that's that thing um all right so that's basically id so let's continue so the next one is pg dp which has nothing to do with pj like the youtuber that's not related no relation at all <laughs> okay so pgdp uh introduction to programming is basically um not really that much. We had like uh, tutorials where people, uh, where other students teach uh, that are further in the semester than you and who got certain grades, I think. I don't know if it depends uh, or if it's uh, whatever. And they te basically teach you programming and it's everything it is. Like it's just uh, very practical. And yeah, it's just learning programming in Java. And then we've got like homework, and the homework was graded. And yeah, the homework was just program in Java 2. For I have some minus points right there. So, this programming job, okay, the basic idea is um, to make a project, right? Like this project. It was basically a search engine. Search engine. It does sound high, but it's not so complicated. It's not too. Bad, really. Okay, but there are some things about the search engine that are like problematic, or generally about the way they did it. Because we were like, uh, we got some papers, right? And there were some um, exercises on there, or some things we had to do, and then we upload them. Nothing wrong with that. So then uh, this is like uh, week one. Then we have week two. Which is like again a new paper, and now it basically um, continues where the previous one left off. And so, if you um, like call a function, yikes, way to go, writing func. So if you call a function that you've previously implemented, turns out that is wrong. You will lose points doing that. So that's not what it works. So it is called the project, but you can't depend on old stuff that you've done. Like, what's up with that? I, I thought it's supposed to be a project, then why? Ah, I don't understand that. That's like weird. That's like really weird. Uh, that's more one of the points that's really annoying. And the other thing that is really bad about that thing is like, um, the homework goes from no, not no. It goes from Sun Sunday, Friday, Friday. I think it goes from Friday to Monday. So first of all, you have the overlap of Friday, it's supposed to be an R, by the way. Just we're very good at drawing. So it goes from Friday to Monday, and you have this overlap from 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 Friday to Monday, basically. And the overlap is like really annoying because some people start the next homework and you're still at the, at the past homework. So this may be quite depressing. Called Deppy. <laughs> this might be quite depressing since we're already that far. Like I didn't have a problem because I programmed before. If you would uh, describe this in a learning curve, it was basically going like this. Oh, not even. Really. It felt more like this, more steeper. This is just too liney. It needs to. If it's, we're getting there. So basically, like this. So if you never programmed before, you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> Except you're fast. If you have a fast learner, if your IQ is high or whatever, if you're good at learning. If you get the idea, like bling or something like that. I don't know. Oops, that was too much. So then you have no problem with it, honestly. But eh. Eh. So yeah, that's another problem that's right there. Um Yeah, but that's basically everything there is. If you if you can get through with it, if you understand everything and 
if you're a fast learner, then you have no problems. Else, I would actually recommend you to like pre-learn or something like that. So you're actually getting with it, the speed, something like that. Like if you've programmed before, you're not gonna have any bad any problems. Um, generally, even if you haven't programmed before, if you like, if you have a technical mind or if you like really get into it really fast, then that's really good. Um, the topics what were used or that were um, done there is like the basics, basics. How do you basics of a programming language and everything? And the other thing that was there is like we did some streams, streams RP, and what else is there? Now that's pretty much everything. If you really make it everything really compact, it's basically basic stream API and yeah, the data structures, I guess. Like list and view and all that kind of stuff, you know. Also algorithms, like search algorithms, but I don't think I need to mention them too much. So that's basically PGDP. So yeah. Oh yeah, there's one last thing I need to mention. That's like um. Oh, that's that's beautiful. Wow. Way to show off something really beautiful. Not not trying too hard because I don't want to spend too much time drawing. But basically, I think you get the idea. Like, uh, if it doesn't do it, then there you go. That should explain a little bit. And if that's not something you know, then I guess maybe this 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 could be uh more familiar to some people. But basically, what I want to get at is uh, time. Time. And which time the time consume and consume stuff? I don't know. So the problem is that it does take a lot of time. Like it's not a problem of implementing. Like the implementing is okay, okay. But the problem is like the debugging, because no one likes bugs. So that's basically the issue. Yeah. Because it takes a lot of time, you have to really invest a lot of time on your week on that. Like there's this uh, thought that students don't have to do much, but if you like study this, then sorry, there's actually a lot to have uh, to do. So that's about that. Um, without further ado, let's continue to the next point because I don't want to keep uh, on the same point too long. So games engineering. Ooh, games. <laughs> Okay, so games engineering is um, basically just uh, there's also a tutor. Like it's a mix of of PG, PGDP and ID from the way it's uh, done. There's tutorium. I don't know if that's what it's called in English. Sounds good. <laughs> it's similar to this probably. And then there's the lectures. So. The lectures are like um, the concept behind it, um, engines, how are engines built, what are engines uh, like, what, how do they work, and all the kind of stuff. How does rendering work, and all the like, all the little points around engines stuff. And we have also the history of J games. There was a thing like genres, um, the game crash back in 1983, and also that kind of stuff, you know, and then there are also like um that's actually it right no no no, no, game design design that's also a point i so I think it does a good job of uh generalizing game dev really well, like you get a lot of everything and you also get a little bit of like details in in like engines and things of the technical stuff. So I think it was really well designed, uh, in my opinion, for for the, the first semester, of course. I'm gonna be interested in the next semester because that's going to be um, graphics, like real time rendering. Uh, tutorium was basically Unity make game. It's also a project that was uh, not obligatory, but it gave a bonus grade. The so make a game. That's basically what it was. 
Um, and there was also like explaining of different features of Unity and mostly programming for like generally how does your Unity work, uh, what are current times, and all the kind of stuff that you can do with Unity. Thanks. Filing was also the topic, I think. Yeah, it was definitely. So yeah, make a game. Uh, we did two projects. That was a, a platformer, which was the latter one. And the previous one, or the former one, was a space shooter. And then last but not least, we had like finally our own project. Which could be anything, really. Really anything. Doesn't really matter. I did. That's where I did. Uh, came in. Uh, got the idea to make next area, which I'm gonna work on later on. So, oh my god, that's a lot of stuff. And now it's gone. Goodbye. Where did I go? Goodbye, Moon Man. <laughs> All right, now let's get into the next topic, which is like one of the topics where I have like the most issues with, and that's like story wise. But I'm not going to go deep into it. But me and math is like, yeah, it's really badly drawn. I think that really symbolizes how I feel about math. So the problem is, um, I did well in math for a long time, and then there was like this. 7th grade, 8th grade in, in, in Realschule, like in Germany we have the different schooling system. Um, you can go into it somewhere else, I'm not gonna spe uh, specialize into that right now. And then there was something, something happened that basically made it hard for me to, to work with math. And afterwards when I continued with Ruth's Oberschule, which is a way to get into uh, college, basically, there I was like, oh yeah, this, this is actually really easy. How come I did not understand that back then? And then like the next year it was like, oh god, what are these puzzle exercises? And just, what? Like integrating, oh my god. Don't even get me started on integrating, it's terrible. Like the symbol, the symbol of the devil. You can draw some devil horns on there. Basically, yeah. Yikes. But I was surprised that math. I was like, math. Yeah, that's 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 math. And then when you study, you're like, no, no, no. You haven't seen all. There's like a no new like new math. Let's show you some new math. <laughs> that's basically what it is. Like it's oh my god, discrete structures. Okay, let me get started on that. Like seriously, discrete structured structures. Discrete. Structures. OMG. This is like, what the heck is going on, guys? This this is not what I know math to be. And basically, uh, there are like five topics what we went into. There's like, um, first one was, say it, I guess collections maybe. I don't know. That's probably wrong. Like it's like this, this, this thing with the way we have this symbol and this symbol and these symbols. We have like A, B, C are in this category or collection or whatever. Then you can do like I don't know stuff with it and A, like the, the might of D or I don't know the English terms for this actually. I didn't really think about that when when I made this video. Like, like, if you know what this is, then you basically know what I'm talking about. So that's basically what it is in the end. There's nothing really much more than that breaks down to this. Like it gets a little bit more into detail. There's a little bit more stuff and things and I don't know. But yeah. Yes. There's also some stuff like like relations between like uh, if you say um, one equals one, this this equals and there's actually the thing that's this is a relation, and there's like different attributes that a relation can have. Like it could be transitive, which means like if you write, uh, where do we do that? Yeah, 
1 equals 1 equals 1. That's transitive, because uh, if 1 equals 1, then 1 also equals 1 back here. Like, but basically, it's just stuff. I don't know. I'm going too deep again. So number two is graph theory, which is like, wait, what? That's math? <laughs> Oh god, that's interesting and really cool. Like, there's this app where you play uh, games. Yeah, like you have uh, a point, and then you have another point, and then you have another point, and another point, and then you have a line between these. And your goal is to go um, to, to, to start at a point and hit each line only once. Not two times, only once. You know it, you know it, you know it, you know it. There's this very famous construct that people know that I don't know what it's called in English in Germany it's called uh, the house of uh, uh, Nikolaus that a thing I don't know whatever so basically following the lines without um, following a line twice let's see if I can do it we start here and go this and this and this and that and then we go here here and there perfect nice so yeah, that's basically this idea. And there's this concept, um, it's called a uh, Hamilton tour. So that's a thing uh, of graph theory, for example, the Hamilton tour, uh, which basically is like, which attributes does a graph need to have so that you can follow each line once uh, without going over a line sort of twice? Uh, visiting each point at least once, and yeah, that's basically it. There's also the Hamilton circle where you start at the same point where you end on. That's really interesting. If I make an Android game, like that's an idea, because I know there are games that do the Hamilton tour. I don't know any games that do the Hamilton uh, circle. That's really cool. Also, um, uh, bop, 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 bop graphs or directed graphs where we have these um, lines with an arrow there's like color uh, how you color them um, different uh, attributes that make um, that make sure that a graph has like a circle like where it goes like around like this it's connected in that way there are like ways to say a graph is not connected like this up here and this down here it's not connected the uh, attributes that say that uh, there's no line that goes over another line, and all that kind of stuff. Like, it's it's a ton of stuff, honestly. The third category of that is... Um, that already? No, it's, it's, it's uh, basically logic. Now you've seen it, like, 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 A, what is the symbol? And B, for example. And 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 you have an uh, or, and then you have the uh, what is this implication? This is really interesting. I didn't know that one existed before. And there's the no, that's not correct. This symbol, B conditional, like when left side and right side are equal, for example. This is one, and this results in zero. And there's, mm, yeah, other stuff like XOR and etc. Like logic, basic logic as you know it. And there's some strategies, some algorithms where, like the DPLL for resolution one uh, algorithm, that basically say, can the problem be solved or can it not be solved in as fast or as possible, basically. Yeah, so that's logic. Um, implication is funny, by the way, but I'm not going to talk into it. You should look at into implementation, it's funny. Because you can do like things like, um, if the wall is purple, then I can live forever. And it's uh, and if you say this, if the pur uh, wall is purple, implicates that I can live forever. That sentence is logically true. Because the wall isn't purple, you can see it, it's white. So we can't really say if it's true or not, so we just say it's true. And that's like really funny, in my opinion. Like it's it's ridiculous, really ridiculous. 
So these are the first three categories, and it's not everything, unfortunately. Math, man. Math is crazy. Crazy math. Crystal math. That's why I call it, by the way. Crystal math. Making fun of it. But anyways, fourth category. Fourth category is combinatorics. Combi. Matorics. <laughs> I have no idea why I wrote it like, like that. But anyways, combinatorics is not really that complicated. The basic idea of, of, of like, Lotto, for example. What are the chances? How many possibilities are there? Do you two get a certain number combination? Uh, there's like uh, card games. Like, uh, what is it called? Poker, for example. That's what you can do. There's also some things you have, like this weird construct. So, this is the. What are we called? Something with sec second type. I don't know. Sterling, that's it. Sterling numbers. Sterling numbers of a second type, for example. So, combinatorics. Just some stuff on basically combinatorics. I don't know, man. <laughs> and the fifth category is algebra. And the first thing I think of if I hear algebra is like A equals B plus C. That's not it. That's wrong. Or at least not in this case, it is not that. So algebra is basically the, or like what we did in algebra in discrete structures is like, um, you have like all these numbers, you know, all these numbers, that, all these numbers, including zero, maybe. And all these numbers um, are combined with an operator, uh, like a multiply. Um, then we have like 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 a neutral element, which is also something very interesting. Which is, if it's uh, multiply, it should be one. We go to the right. And so the other thing you have is like this with fourteen down here. Just like, ah, oh, that's what's that supposed to be? It's not that complicated, actually. What this means is basically you have a group of numbers where you take a number, like for example, three, and you can multiply it with four, five, and then you would get 15. But actually, in this group, what happens is if you multiply three with five, you have this little 14 down here. Back. Not really there, it's a little bit more to the right. What in here, and basically, what happens is you multiply 3 over 5, which would be 15. But in actuality, it's 15 what? 14, which is equivalent under the modulo of 14 to 1. So 3 times 5 is actually 1 in this group. And so the one, uh, this neutral element basically means if you have three multiplying in this group with one, then you get the number itself. That's basically the idea. And then you just have some calculation with it, nothing really. And this is actually, you would be like, what do you need that for? That's like, what the heck? Like, nice, but where do you use it? And it actually turns out you use it for ASA and um, encryption. So for safety, basically. Which is really interesting when I heard that. You also learn some other stuff like there's this EEA, the expanded uh, Euler algorithm, where you can basically calculate the GGT, which is something in Germany. In German, that's uh, the biggest um, divider of all the numbers in uh, given, basically. And so that's the thing. And you also have like um, uh, the order of a number in in the group that you can calculate, where you can figure out that um, basically. Uh, what was it? 
Oh yeah, seven uh, to the power of k equals one, or, or like is equivalent under this group to one. So that's basically the result of uh, let's not call it a a a or k. Basically the k. So that's also a thing. And you need for encryption probably. And that's basically everything for math. Um, I'm not a fan of math, but I can see how it relates to informatics, especially graph theory is like a big one. Algebra, there's a encryption, you know. Uh, combinatorics, maybe? I mean, it really depends on what software you program and everything. I guess depending on that, you can actually need it or not. So that's basically these four here that are the, like X, that are like the primary ones. Um, but it's also not at all. So there's like this other thing I did. One. So I already told you that you can like choose your destiny, basically. And what I did is, um, I'm really interested in Japanese, so I actually took Japanese A1.1. And yeah, basically what you learn is just like um, uh, basic sentences, basic sentences, basic sentences. You learn hiragana. You learn your name. My name is Jeff, for example. <laughs> your name in katakana. Um, introducing yourself. You learn four kanji, just some basic ones. The other one you learn are uh, like uh, this one for day, and we have like um, book, uh, symbol for. Yeah, that was wrong. No, that's. This then this line. There we go. Language and last but not least, the symbol for person. Um, and also how to read them, obviously. Then the other thing you learn, 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 learn like uh, time. Uh, some question words. Days, month, uh, numbers. You also learn like uh, different stuff that relates to that, to the time. Like for example, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, or yesterday, the day before yesterday. There's uh, verbs and the mass form, which is like being very polite. And also the um, past, present, and negative of these. And then you have also, last but not least, what is it I'm missing? Oh yeah, the particles. Some of them. Not all, but many of them. Pretty much, actually it's pretty much almost all. But it's like uh, particles can be the same particle can be used for different things, and so that's basically where you do not go too deep into deep. And that's pretty much everything from Japanese. You can just everything. All right. So that's basically everything that has been happened. Everything. So you kind of have a good overview of what you will actually learn if you do it, or if you're like just interested in what's happening. So. Yeah. Um there's also some thing cause we there's this 
Extreme Topic of the Exam. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so of course, like as I already mentioned, like PGDP has uh, these uh, homework that's graded, and the rest has like exams. So the uh, like five exams that I wrote was it four? It was four actually, four exams that I wrote, and so yeah. Um, yeah, let's start with uh, Introduction to Informatics. Introduction to Informatics was the last exam I wrote and was actually pretty crazy. Um, the thing is, like, time constraint is a huge issue on this exam. Because they actually design it so that you won't be, a even if you're professional, you won't be able to finish it. Because then we can just uh, see, hey, um, who got the most? He will probably get a 1.0 if he did get the most points, I mean, and then you can go down from there. I imagine. I'm I'm not 100% sure. Maybe you do, do, do it a little bit below that person or something. Yeah, I have no idea how it works, but I can understand it from the point we're going at. Because like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the time constraint is a huge issue there. Um, it basically isn't that complicated, like most of the things you have to do in the exam are very basic. Uh, so that's a good point. Uh, so I'm really okay with it, I guess. Um, but it has at least 50%, if not more, of handwritten code. And that's like Yikes. It's like really yikes. So, it's a big fat minus. <laughs> right there. And see. Uh, yeah. Big fat minus. So, yeah. That's ID. Um, going on with games engineering. Games engineering was almost perfect, actually. Like, there was a lot of stuff. Uh, Content, a lot of content. It was like, eh, not really necessary. You don't need to know that. It's like nice to know and everything. But overall, um, yeah, if, if you've like uh, repeated everything that has been done, or like the most important things that have been done, then you're really fine with it. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna, if you like games engineering, if, if you're interested in it, you will do fine with it. Believe me, so that's not an issue. We have math. Math is like um, two pages. What? Yes, yeah, it's, it's actually two pages. Look, um, there are hardly any uh, any exercises that you have to do. Like, it's really broken down to this little thing where you get like. Um, Oh yeah, there's this category that you you know like this uh, one, two, three, four, five categories where 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 there like uh, combinatorics, algebra, graph theory, blah 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 blah. At most, a category will give you eight points. At most. So yeah, points are usually around forty to two 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 two. Uh, no, actually, it's forty. Actually, the range is, I guess, 63 to 48 points, pretty much. Uh, ID, for example, has 150 points. Uh, Games Engineering, I don't remember. Actually, I guess maybe 120? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, so you can see, like, what? <laughs> Hardly any points, and... Hardly any exercises. So the problem with this is, um, if there's like a category where you're not good in, you will lose a lot of points, and that could actually really mean that you will extremely fast uh, be unable to pass it. That's like it's crazy. It's really crazy and very scary. I don't know if I pass it, by the way. I have only one grade, and that's Japanese. Okay. So then we have uh, yeah PGDP homework. 
and when we have like Japanese. Japanese is just like, um, for example, write a few sentences about like, uh, what's it called? A calendar. Like there's a calendar where uh, for a week where a person does like different stuff and you have to write sentence for it. Then there's a exercise where you have to introduce yourself and you just have to write three, to four, five sentences to introduce yourself. And there's some exercises to you have to write out numbers. You have a little exercise to listen to what the teacher says. Um, so listening, listening, um, writing. There's no speaking test. There's no speaking. Uh, I can write it down. Listening. Yes. Writing. Speaking. Everything is in hiragana, basically, by the way. And you have like these four kanji. You need to know those four kanji. You have like hiragana, obviously. Uh, katakana can be written as ranji, which is like the Western way to write things, Japanese things. Um, yeah, that's basically it. There isn't, uh, actually, yeah, yeah, there's like the particles, particles, and grammar. Like write sentences with verbs, grammar, sentences, in brackets, sentences. Talking about sentences, that's perfect. Because now we get to the interesting point, the sentence. Basically, the review, or the end review. Four. So. Overall, as so overall to catch everything I've said and to to, to clean up, so we have um a pretty good semester I would say. Like you get a deep introduction into programming. Like programming, you go even way further down than an introduction would let you. So that's really really good, I guess. It does take a lot of time, so that's a huge point. If you don't have time, it's gonna be really tough. Um. So yeah, programming is in depth. That's really cool, I guess. Uh, Java. Yeah, need to be a friend of Java. If you don't like Java, you're gonna have a bad time. Maybe I don't know, but it's okay. It's a good language to learn. So, hey. Eh. Then we have um Beth. Yes. Um get through it. Get through it. Try to understand as much as possible because like there's certain things like graph theory is like really important. But you should keep in mind and you will need it. Like for example in, in Unity, the zine graph, it's a graph, you know, and it's shown as a graph. Or if you build your own engine, like these are some details that are really really helpful. The algorithms and everything, it's it's uh, the the logic and everything. It is good. It is really good. Um, I wish there was a better introduction from school to college or to university. Cause like there was a gap because it was like something completely new in math that I've never seen in my life. I know there's an introduction uh, introductionary course before the um semester that you can take but i was working at the time so i couldn't so yeah okay next thing um yeah i'm mostly pgdp by the way informatics was nice but not very technical actually it was okay like the pgdp and informatic go really well together they are like almost one and the same similar to games engineering which i get now uh, to now but games engineering was like unity programming so it's good like you have an engine you know how to build a game basically so that's like something you can use and that you can uh, so you have something basically. it was a good uh, capture of roundabout everything um, but game design, game dev, 
uh, what an engine is, how an engine works, and everything. Like it was it had to do a really good job. Like for the first semester, games engineering was maybe not perfect, but it was really, really great. Um, if you've already gotten into game design and and, and everything, like uh, if you've already worked with DirectX and OpenGL and everything, it's going to be rather rather boring for you, I would say. But if not, it's going to be fine. But if you really want to study this or not, really, and you've already done all that stuff, then um, just check out the next review I do, and we can go into more de detail. And Japanese, uh, there's nothing I can say about it. No negative. No neck. It was really fine. So that means, of all, I would say that this university cools. Yes. Uh, I was. This is going to be an insider, but it's going to get uh really badly drawn. Penguin out of ten. If you study at the, game, uh, at, at the Technical University Munich in informatics, you're going to know what I mean by that. And if you don't, then I guess you need a real score. Let's say. I would say 8 out of 10. Like, if, uh, there are a few things that you can improve, like the time consumment of, of the debugging. Like, that's really troublesome. I mean, okay, you, you have to find your own stuff. And, and there are, like, a few things where I'm like, eh, it would have been better. So let's say. 8 out of 10 is really nice. Maybe a little bit up, like 8 out of 8 out of 6, maybe. I don't know. I had just... I'm not good with free. Anyways, that's basically it. I have been talking for over an hour on this topic. That's crazy. And yikes. I've gotten pretty much into detail, but not too much into detail. Like over capturing the overall semester, I think I did a good job. So yeah, I don't know if you like this video, um, if you do, I'm gonna make another one after the next semester, like currently it's semester break, which is like, <sighs> it's great, man, it's really great, now I can like, chill, get back to gaming, continue the projects I had, and stuff, I don't know, so I'm gonna wrap the video up right now, cause it's like almost an hour, and yeah. So, thanks everyone for watching, thanks for all the support, I hope you enjoyed, if you did, then leave a like, if this gets enough likes and everything, I'm gonna make another one for the next semester, like, there's six semesters to go, so it's gonna be fine, and maybe I'll add a master to it, if you're thinking about it, but, yeah, alright, and with that, uh, see ya, bring Nick out, for today, enjoy whatever you're doing.